All right, so this is final exam review three, and we are going to start off with labeling a vector diagram, free body diagram, for an object that is sitting on an inclined plane. So I'm going to create my surface. There's my inclined plane. I have an object that is there. Um, this is going to be some angle, and I'll either give it to you or you have to solve for it. Um, and we will start labeling forces. So <clears throat> there is obviously weight, and there's all obviously going to be a support to that weight, um, and there could be friction. I'm going to show this as a friction-free inclined plane, um, but we can add the friction in to show you, so I'm just going to start with it as friction-free. So this angle here, I'm just going to label as 22 degrees. I'm going to say this is my... FG. I always start with FG. We know that FG equals MG. Mass times acceleration due to gravity on Earth will give us our weight on Earth. I use this force first because then I break it into components, right? Because the weight is actually acting at an angle to the surface. This is not strictly vertical and it's not strictly horizontal. It's a component of both the vertical and the horizontal. And when it's like that, you have to put a little box around it and then um, label what those components are. So in this case, and in all the cases that we worked, our two components are going to be F perpendicular and F parallel, right? And this is really F parallel down here, right? I draw the vector up here, but this is also really F parallel, okay? So I also have, let me draw that, F normal. And remember that F normal and F parallel or F perpendicular are equal, right? This down component and this up component have to be even Steven because it's not rising up and it's not sinking still, right? Remember that the F normal will offset gravity if it's horizontal, but when it's on an inclined plane like this, it's really the F um, perpendicular that's offsetting the F normal, okay? Slight difference. And then we know I've shown this work to you before, um, how this angle and this interior angle right here are equal. So whatever this angle is will become the inside angle of this triangle that we just made, right? With our FG, F perpendicular, and F parallel. And so this is 22 degrees. So then to basically label all of our stuff here, um, this F parallel is opposite, right, of the angle. This is the hypotenuse. This is adjacent. So remember back to Sokotoa. So if this is opposite, because we know this value, right? It, FG, we would normally give you the mass. You know how to calculate FG. It'll be pretty easy and straightforward. So this is the opposite side. We know the hypotenuse side given the mass. So in order to use the so part, it's going to be F parallel. Remember F parallel then is the X component of FG. That's really what it is. It's the X component of FG. Then we look at Sokotoa again. And we say, well, we have this F perpendicular, which is really the Y component of FG, okay? In order to figure this out, and as the Y component, this is the adjacent angle. We would know the hypotenuse because we would know the mass. So as the adjacent angle, it's going to be the Ka for the F perpendicular. Then coming up with, well, what are these equations? So if this is really the X component of FG and it's we're doing Sokotoa, really what that looks like is sine theta 
equals opposite over adjacent. Um, I know what um, not opposite over adjacent, opposite over hypotenuse. So we know what the hypotenuse is. If we then rearrange the equation to say, well, is hypotenuse sine theta equals opposite? Well, what is opposite? Opposite is f parallel. What is hypotenuse? It's really fg and sine of what angle? 22 degrees. Well, what is fg really? fg is mg. So we say, and I shouldn't have just put the degrees in, but we say mg sine theta is your f parallel. That is our equation for that. When we look at f perpendicular then, f perpendicular works much the same way. We're going to use the ka of it. So I'll show it over here. So we have um, cosine theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. We're going to make adjacent by itself. So it's really hypotenuse cosine theta equals adjacent. Well, what is adjacent? Adjacent is um, f perpendicular. So f perpendicular equals what is really our hypotenuse, this longest stretch here that is opposite the side of the right angle is your hypotenuse. Um, and that's fg cosine theta. Well, what is fg? It's mg. So we always quickly say, you don't have to show all this work on the test, but I just want to review with you where are we getting this from. So we're really just breaking this fg into components, and the x component of, of fg is f parallel, and the y component of fg is f perpendicular. And we can come up with a pretty standard way of problem solving. So if I said, you know, what is f parallel in this situation, or draw a situation in which you label, you know, with the equations or whatever, um, f perpendicular, or f parallel, or how would you solve for f parallel is mg sine theta. Or if I said how to solve for f perpendicular, it's mg cosine theta. Um, and this would be just a sort of a way of problem solving this particular um, set.